Hi, everyone. Uh, it was great to meet with you all yesterday. I thought instead of just sending this PowerPoint, either as a PDF or a plain PowerPoint, that I would give you a short narration with some comments to follow up on our great discussion yesterday. I hope it's helpful. So these next four slides just give you a quick review of the definition of the SAMR model and its purpose um, and a, a reference to the adult and active learning video as well as what the whole goal is with active learning, uh, principally being that we want to transform the learner role into someone who's more actively making a sense of the material of the concepts and applying them and stepping into more of a uh, teacher of self and peers. So the SAMR model was designed as a tool for assessing how we integrate technology in a given learning experience. However, as you discussed yesterday, this can be expanded to not only assess tech integration for existing curriculum, but also to design new experiences, not just for tech integration, but in terms of instructional design. You also said that the SAMR model tells us what it means to transform a learning experience to, to ensure it's above the line in terms of technology. Uh, the main point being that uh, is when technology transforms the experience, it does tend to move the design toward learner-centered education. It tends to transform the role of instructor and learners so that learners are actively making sense of key concepts, apply, applying them in real time, and participating in teaching themselves and peers. And in this way, uh, we can see the interconnection between the theories of active and adult learning and the SAMR model. During our discussion, you also described functional improvements in what I thought was a functional way. You said technology can get in the way sometimes and that simply using low tech or no tech might be the most effective way to make the point. The example you gave was when Dr. Darnell used her hands to demonstrate something in class rather than use a high tech model that would have required more explanation. This is a great example of our never ending quandary. Does the technology make a functional difference in how the concept is conveyed? Is it effective and is it efficient? We also discussed the use of PlayPosit in particular, both in our pre-session work and the pre-session work you did for Dr. Wright in the MSS block. You explained that PlayPosit's ability to interpose questions enables the instructor to know whether the students understand the key concepts before coming to class. This allows the instructor to adapt what they do in the classroom. Do they need to spend more time clarifying a concept or is everybody ready to go? This also highlights a way in which technology can make a functional improvement. Had I given you a worksheet to complete, I would not have known in advance that you had so well understood the principles and concepts we were about to discuss in our session. Finally, you all agree that choosing to teach below the line does not mean we're engaging in bad teaching. We all know great instructors who know how to synthesize and convey concepts in a coherent, cogent manner, and perhaps in an entertaining way and we would choose to attend their lecture, even if it were not required. So when we rethink how we use SAMR, I think we decided that transfer, transformation of the learning design should facilitate active participation, decentralize the instructor's role, centralize the learner's role, enable the instructor to adapt in the group learning space, and utilize technology to facilitate the curriculum design effectively and efficiently. Flip learning is just one example of how to transform lear the learning experience. The article I gave you uh, by McCoy et al. also um, discusses uh, how we can map the curriculum to ensure that we're using active learning strategies. And that article is also very helpful to give you a good sense of how very long the list is on the types of learning strategies that would promote a learner-centered education and uh, active learning. Uh, I also attach to um, MedLearn a, what I call a cheat sheet on active learning strategies for you to have at your disposal.
We can use an iterative process. First, we're going to draft or revise learning objectives, determine the instructional design, and then determine the technology with the best fit to carry out that design. So with drafting learning objectives or revising them, we want to make sure they accurately reflect what we want students to know or be able to do and make sure they identify the target cognition. Is it lower or higher order thinking? Uh, higher order thinking tends to be associated with active learning, so we have to keep that in mind. On the instructional design, we then have to figure out what instructional methods will um, be most suitable to helping students achieve those objectives and in determining the technology with the best fit, does it foster active learning? Does it facilitate participation in formative assessment? And overall, is it better to use that technology more efficient, more effective than not? These three objectives are from a real lecture from a few years ago that we transformed to a more active session. Um, so we're going to take a look at these and apply what we've been discussing in our session yesterday. The first two objectives use lower order cognition uh, verbs, describe and identify, and they're fine because both of those represent knowledge that's foundational um, to students participating in something that's a higher order level of thinking about this disease process concerning osteoarthritis. The third objective is something that we need to review because it is intended as a higher order um, thinking uh, engagement, but the verb articulate might not express that as well as we'd like. To accurately reflect what I actually want students to know and be able to do, I'm going to revise the third objective and state it as evaluate patient presentation, including diagnostic tests and develop a differential diagnosis. Then I'm going to add a fourth objective, explain why the clinical presentation justifies the inclusion of each condition in the differential. This ensures that the students will be operating at a higher order level of thinking. Remember, the goal here is transformation. So we want to make sure that the instructor's role is less central, the learner's role is more central. The way to achieve that is through flipped learning. Students would be given appropriate resources, perhaps an independent learning module to help them achieve learning objectives one and two before they come to class. And then in the group space, the instructor could facilitate case-based learning uh, using a team approach and even an element of gamification. How do we integrate technology to support the transformation of this session? So for the independent learning module, we really want to make sure that includes formative assessment. There's a lot for students to learn here. We want to make sure they get feedback when they're learning on their own in that individual space. We also want to make sure the instructor can identify gaps in learning. So they can plan on reserving a few minutes or so to address those gaps uh, in the live session if needed. And then for case-based instruction, it really ought to be fun. It ought to motivate student participation. And we want to make sure we stay in that modification or redefinition mode of having students act as peer teachers. Uh, so that leads us to which technology is going to support that. That's the final question. And in this case, Play Posit is a good choice to ensure that we can identify gaps for the instructor and give formative feedback to students. Uh, creating an iBook would allow for formative assessment, but not to identify gaps. We'd have to couple that with using a survey software. Um, if we were to use YouTube videos, uh, we could do in-class formative assessment with some kind of polling software. Um, and then if we wanted to gamify case-based instruction, we could use Kahoot or the Teams feature and poll everywhere. So there's a lot of choices and you always have to look in terms of best fit of technology integration. What's the learning curve? Is it too high for a teacher and or learners so that you lose out on your functional improvement you're trying to build in to this transformation level of curriculum? So always think about that before you finalize your plans.
So you might have noticed that this whole process follows the idea of backward design or the principles of backward design. You look at the session goals first, make sure your learning objectives connect back to those. You want to make sure in terms of extending the SAMR model to the design that you're building in functional improvement um, in terms of your um, use of technology. And you want to make sure you've got enough time and that the tech will foster an efficient use of time. Um, you also need to think about tech availability, the cost, the instructor skill, learner skill. Is it really necessary to use any type of uh, technology uh, and for which part of the session? And um, is there a way to make that technology adaptable for different First thing needs? we're gonna talk about is computer-based tools. And most of us are familiar with these. Uh, and most of us have free access. Um, some of these can create publishable quality materials for self-managed learning or for the pre-session work in flip sessions. You can do this with Keynote software on a Mac or PowerPoint um, or any number of Office software tools. Web-based tools are another category of tools. You don't have to install anything on your computer. You create an account and log in and use the software completely online. The active and adult learning software for the pre-session work in this session was created using Powtoon, which is super easy to learn, very small learning curve, um, and it is uh, it looks very much like PowerPoint, create a slide at a time. If you keep your videos to three minutes, like the active learning video was, it's free. Play Pause it has a little bit more of a learning curve, but allows for embedding of questions, and therefore you can create ILMs with this. Mac has tools that are helpful in creating independent learning modules and movies. Um, you can use iMovie to edit the movies you create in Powtoon or create your own. Um, and you can use iBooks Author to create rather elaborate as you want uh, independent learning modules that can contain movies, graphics, 3D representations, and so on. If you own a Mac, then the iBooks Author and iMovie software comes with it free and both create publishable quality materials. Audience response software like Poll Everywhere, Kahoot, or Socrative allow instructors to um, see how students are doing. Are they succeeding in achieving these objectives or not? Do they need to adapt the instruction during the group space to um, fill in the gaps? And it allows learners to see how they're doing, not only for themselves, but in relation to the overall performance of the class. Um, so you wanna make sure that the audience response software has a short learning curve, is cost effective or free, fosters team participation, enables higher order thinking, um, and um, allows for you to collect um, data on how the students are doing and provides feedback to them uh, and overall enhances active engagement. 